Welcome, welcome back to another episode of Uploaded and Unfiltered, the podcast in which I, your host, Jermaine, aka Kryptonite, interviews another creator in regards to their content creation journey. We talk about their triumphs, their wins, their losses, their mindset, and overall, any advice that we provide to any other inspiring content creators out there. Tonight, as always, I have a special guest joining me for tonight's episode. I'm going to read their bio, introduce them, and get this conversation started. My guest tonight is Push Play the DJ. Push is a masterpiece, always trying to masterpiece. He's passionate about sports, music, content, and just life in general. In his own words, Push is trying to do all he can to bless those he cross paths with while learning more about himself every step of the way. Without further ado, let me introduce my homie, my brother from another mother, Push Play the DJ, aka Push. How are you doing tonight? Welcome to the podcast. Yo, thank you, man. Thank you, man. It's a pleasure. It's an honor to be on here, man. I'm glad we could finally link up and get this started, get this taken care of. Because again, when I started this podcast, I had a select few people in mind, and you were definitely on the top of my list as far as people I needed to talk to on this. So I appreciate you. Nah, I appreciate you for, like I said, thinking about me to be on here. It's truly an honor, and I'm I'm excited to finally be here, man. I know it's been like kind of like a long time coming, so I'm happy you know I'm here now. I mean, you you have you was busy, man. You had to get married, you had a honeymoon, you know. Things were moving and you know it had we it took time but everything happens when it needs to so i'm, I'm excited yeah, absolutely same well i honestly i'm not sure how how this started but i need to know not just for me but for the listeners out there what is push's origin story all right let's let's circle all the way back so um growing so i grew up i grew up pretty much in south florida i grew up in miami shout out day county 305 and um I've been DJing since about 2005. So I've always was DJing on the, you know, on the scene in South Beach and mostly on the college mm-hmm. scene. Right. And I did that from 2005 till about 2000, like early 2015, 2016. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so I was, I was like pretty much like fresh, like fresh out of high school in college you know, DJing like everywhere that I needed to DJ because DJ was my full-time job, my part-time job, my job, job, and my job, <laughs> job, job. So, all right. <laughs> but, yeah. So like it was, yeah. DJing was, DJing was the thing that definitely kept me afloat in a lot of situations. Um, Definitely working a regular full-time job while DJing, while also going to college full-time. So mm. uh, sleep was like inexistent. And, um, right, it was sleep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, so sleep was pretty much inexistent, and um, I, I always say that I'm 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 feeling the effects of that now as I'm you know mm. as I'm wiser. I only like say I'm older yeah. as I'm wiser. You know, exactly. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so then um, two like two thousand late two thousand fifteen into early two thousand sixteen, I I moved. I moved from South Florida up to the Washington D.C. area, and um, okay. That was the beginning of one of the major transitions in my life. So, as usual, I was dealing with a lot of homesickness, a lot of depression because I moved on my own. I had I had mm-hmm. no I had no like family to like lean on. Most of my friends are still back in Florida, so I was just dealing with these changes. And like I always say, making these major changes as an adult is one of the hardest things to do. Making friends as an adult is one of the hardest things to do. So those are just different things that I was dealing with. So I was really like down in the dumps and just trying mm-hmm. to, you know, find my footing. And um, my best friend, he, he threw in the idea of just, hey, hey, why don't you just start you know, start live streaming and just like, you know, playing some games and seeing if you can meet people that way. So that was 2018. Mm-hmm. Okay. 2018. So that's when I started started streaming on Twitch. I was already like a member of the community since like Justin TV days. And oh, um, yeah. I used to, and I, I mean, I used to stream back on like sites like Ustream and Stick Cam and things like that. But I got mm-hmm. serious on Twitch December 2018. And I just, like I said, I used it as a way just to like kind of curb the depression and as a way mm-hmm. of like therapy and just to meet new people as an adult. And it kind of just translated into just meeting, you know, meeting other people who were like minded, meeting other people who had shared interests. And when I first started, I started playing retro games. Okay. And so the very first game that I streamed was Kirby's Kirby's Dreamland. Gotcha. On NES. 
doing that, I was able to meet new people. You know, I was, you know, finally just uh, finally able to settle in and get comfortable with, you know, just doing stuff um, doing stuff in front of a camera. Because mm-hmm. it's one thing when you're doing it in front of a camera and nobody's like nobody's in front of you, as opposed to like doing a party when you got thousands of people in front of you. Right. So it was kind of just trying to have that same mindset but in a more, I guess, intimate setting. Right. So then from there, I just, like any other content creator, trying to find what was going to work for me. And uh, we stumbled upon just talking about wrestling because I'm really I'm really big into WWE um, and a whole bunch of other wrestling from, you know, all over the world. And it's something I'm very knowledgeable on. So we just started talking about wrestling and I was like, well, let me just build a safe space for people to talk about wrestling because wrestling was always something that, people would get bullied or, you know, laughed at mm-hmm. or picked on about. So I was like, well, let me, let me build a safe space to have people just to voice their opinions and, you know, not get picked on about it. So that I would say started the the growth of um, who push play the DJ was. Okay. And it, it led to a lot of, a lot of opportunities that I never thought I would have attained. Mm-hmm. And that was, you know, that was also like in that pandemic era, so I kind of right. like took advantage of any opportunity that was available to me. Yes. I will say that my, my story has it's had its highs. And right now, I'm kind of like on that rebuild mode. There's a wrestler by the name of Seth Rollins. He had a, a slogan called redesign, rebuild, and reclaim. Okay. So right now I'm kind of I'm kind of in that mode where it's like I was at the top. And now I'm kind of like back at where I was before. So now I'm just trying to find find a ways to slowly get back to where I was before. Right. But not doing it the same way because I just don't want to be labeled as just a, a wrestling guy. I want to just show more things that I'm interested in as an overall creator. So that's where I'm currently at right now. Hell yeah. All right, bet. No, that makes total sense. And I like that slogan. What was it again? Rebuild. Yeah, redesign, rebuild, reclaim. That is clean. Like, it makes so much sense. And this simple, easy, triple R, I'm going to have to go look yeah. this man up. I Unfortunately, wrestling. I, he got the drip, too. I'm telling you. He yo, got the drip right now, playing. too. <laughs> well, he's the flashiest dude right now. I'm just telling you. My wrestling, I used to love wrestling. And on the last wrestling, the last time I was really into wrestling, and this is going to date me, Ultimate Warrior came back for some match with, uh, I think it was, was it WWE? It had to be. I was like in high school and like people were losing because I love before I found out what I know about Ultimate Warrior. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I loved him as a kid. Like he was my favorite. And hey, when he came back, he, he was like, my favorite too. <laughs> I was like, let's go. And then as an adult, you find out some things about you, man. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. And that's you know, and that's and, and that's the thing that kind of sucks because it's like <laughs> yes. a lot of people that you might consider like a childhood hero, and it's like, mm-hmm. like, yeah, man, like you know, I like I kind of looked up to you, man. You had all this energy and you was live and you was just energetic and you just had you had all like all this hype. Right. And then you know, you learn about them when you're older, and you're like, damn, man, like I don't even want to associate exactly like, you're like oh no i don't oh, ultimate who nah man i don't i don't watch wrestling like that damn <laughs> <laughs> right that's wild cool man let's that's awesome i didn't know you dj'd for that long that's amazing yeah i have right. so many questions but i'm gonna have to ask those offline because they're all dj related and uh <laughs> I mean, listen, yeah, if you got time now, we can answer them now. I don't care. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let me, let me get, let me course correct this current mindset. You said you're in rebuild mode. What's your day to day looking like? What are you feeling like as far as your content right now? So I would say right now, my day to day, it's a good balance of just planning and execution. It's the trying to find a new, a new niche in the, um, in the content space that I can just like work towards. So I I made a decision actually not that long ago mm-hmm. that um I want to get back to what I started on. So like I said, I started doing retro. Yep. And um I always just I always pers- I personally feel that um in this current climate with gaming, it's really so hard to keep up with like all the new games that are yes. consistently coming out. Yes, it is. But I always feel that people people would always like to go back to what they used to play or if they saw a game that they that they used to play when they were younger mm-hmm. they will always go back to it right so so i decided that i'm going to go back into into doing more retro and in a way doing more retro is going to actually tap into 
doing the overall variety part of content that I'm oh, that I'm trying to focus on. Right. So what I'm gonna do, and I guess I guess this is like a world premiere. You know, Hell world yeah! Premiere. Exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, <laughs> so what so what I decided to do, and um, it's just, it's kind of weird because I'm pretty sure I've not I have never heard anyone do something in this sense. I can't. It's kind of crazy, bro. Um, before you even say it, I'm excited as fuck because when people start saying I've never seen anybody else do this or this might be outside of the norm, that's when cool shit happens. So right, let me know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick a I'm gonna pick a console, a retro console. And I'm going to play every single title of that console from A to Z. God damn. That's that's gonna be wild. So basically every stream would be a new game, like you know, from either the letter A. Mm-hmm. If, I, if if like let's say for example, I'm playing like I'm gonna start with Nintendo NES. God damn. So whatever games are starting with the letter A in Nintendo NES, I'm yeah. going to play that game, regardless of regardless of the genre, regardless of how how stupid the game might be. Yes. <laughs> regardless of how like unfinished the game is, I'm just it's it's kind of one of those things where it's like, have you ever been to like the world of Coca Cola? Oh yeah, in Atlanta, in Georgia. Y- yeah. Right. So if you've been to the world of Coca-Cola, they have that one section where you have like that that taste of like the world. Yes, that's my favorite spot. Right. So you're basically just trying different flavors from each different country. You're like, mm-hmm. oh, this is not bad. Like, mm, I'm not gonna like this one. Exactly. And, mm, this is not right. I'm kind of doing it in that type of sense where it's like, all right, I'm gonna play these games and I'm gonna basically like play them. If it's games I've never played before, yeah. it's provides a new experience. If it's games in a genre that I probably don't even like, still do it. But it also gives me a way to like kind of rate rate games as well as like how they were made and also let the community be exposed to games that they probably even never seen, mm-hmm. never thought of, never heard of. And it gives them a whole different experience that all coincides with like my community name, which is called the station. Mm-hmm. So like I'm real big into like traveling and like subways and things like that. So it's basically going on a big old destination to like so many different styles of games types yeah. of games varieties of games and it's just a big old you know destination of fun i love this idea push this sounds amazing like <laughs> i appreciate I, it like my head just it kind of exploded i don't want to hold on let me think <laughs> i'm just gonna say this because you probably already thought of it but like okay you got your stream and like that's gonna be dope but like youtube exactly with this content what the f- that's Okay, All right. Because my head, like, I know, I know your personality. I know how you get. If you play something that's frustrating, that's gonna be entertainment for everybody. Yeah, exactly. You know, so it's like, yeah, and so like the only, I would say the only somewhat downside, and I mean, it's it's kind of understood is that I'm probably I'm going to only I'm going to only stick to, I guess, games that were kind of released in America. True. That I'm able to access because yeah. I mean, if I want to play games that were also in Japan, and I mean that's you know, granted that's that's it's never ending content. Exactly. That's the way I'm looking at it. Exactly. Because it's like I can go through because Nintendo might have three thousand plus games, mm-hmm. so that's at least that's at least a stream a day where I'm doing either one game or I'm doing like two or three games yep. to mm-hmm. get through each console, and then after that. I probably will let the community decide, all right, what console should we tap into next? And they're like, okay, let's go to Sega Genesis. And then now we're going to go A to Z through Sega Genesis. So I'm going to, like I said, I rather, I started with Nintendo because I feel like it's a console that everybody has either played or has had some type of experience with. Fact. And then, um, I, so I want to see, I'm using, I guess you could say I'm using it as like the guinea pig mm-hmm. where it's like, okay, if it works with every single game playing there from A to Z, cool. If it doesn't work, then what it, what I can do is that I can, you know, create like a wheel and put all the games in each letter and pick like 10 games of yeah. that letter. And then those will be the 10 games that we play, you know, so 10 games from A, 10 mm-hmm. games from B, 10 games from C. And then we just continue with that way. But um, I like the sense of just playing every single game because the way I look at it is that there's no way that I could get bored because it's like, <laughs> right. all right, I'm trying something new mm-hmm. every single day. Exactly. You know, 
Yeah, and then it's like, and then whenever it comes to a game, it's like a duplicate, like a Street Fighter or NBA Jam or Mortal Kombat. I will say whatever console we get to play it on first, and then we'll probably just skip it on the new one. Yeah, that makes Unless sense. Unless it's like a significant change from one game to the next. Um, no, that is dope. I like I like this a lot. That this makes me excited. Hearing somebody's idea, like the genesis of it, like how excited they are before the world tries to like take them down and be like, nah, man, that ain't going to work because this is this. No, fuck that. This is a good ass idea. Push with that, man. I like this. People are so quick to just try to tear down somebody's like vision and dream. And I'm like, yo, just like, why don't you just let that person just do what they enjoy? And then if it doesn't work for them, let them decide that it didn't work for them or like let them decide that they want to like tweet things out like stop like stop trying to be the whole judge jury and ex- executioner you know like exactly shut the fuck up <laughs> <laughs> you know what that is a perfect segue into lessons learned this is a section where i ask are my guests what lesson have you learned that you only could have learned through content creation or that you have learned because of content creation the number one thing i always think of is um ace hood man closed mouths do not get fed Closed mouths do not get fed, and that especially is prevalent in content creation. Mm-hmm. And the reason I w- I will say this: the reason that I I'm confident now enough to say that I at one point in my content creation career I was at the top. Yeah, and I was at and I was at the top doing something that once again nobody was really doing. Mm-hmm. And and the only reason why it got to that point was because I decided because I took advantage of opportunities. So. I'm not going to say that I was one of the first people to to sidecast sports mm-hmm. on on Twitch cuz I wasn't. There was when I started, there was other people that I saw that was doing it and I reached out to them and they told me their limit. They told me their ceiling and it just gave me it gave me motivation to break through it cuz yeah. I used to speak to people and they were doing wrestling sidecasting streams and color commentary and they was like, yeah, I've been doing this because, you know, I love it. I enjoy it. But like for me to get like a Twitch, like to get Twitch partner because of it. Nah, that's never going to happen. <laughs> nobody's gonna care. And I was like, all right, bet. Yeah, so, right. Um, you know, so luckily enough, like I I'm thankful for opportunity to present itself. And I'm also thankful for my for me to open up my mouth and to take advantage of opportunity because when the pandemic hit, I was working with a lot of other Twitch partners. And at that time I was an affiliate. Right. And I this was when they were building Twitch sports to mm-hmm. what it is now. So like I was like kind of on the I was one part of the foundation of what Twitch Sports is now. And when the pandemic hit and the sh- and sports shut down. Like nobody else was like, well, there's no sports, so we can't do anything. The only sport that decided to keep going during the pandemic was wrestling. Of course. So (laughs) I just said, hey, if you need me to still do sports content, I'll do it. Let me know. And I kept the ball rolling. And because of that, I was able to get my first, I was able to get my first ever wrestling interview. I was able to interact with other wrestlers and and build connections with them. Mm -hmm. I was able to build connections with, you know, with Twitch staff and build relationships that way. And um, I, I I just feel that I'm always in, in, in the good graces of Twitch because of my professionalism, my willingness to, you know, to take chances, to take risks Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, my, and my availability to always do something on the sports side whenever they needed it, because, Hey, like if you had an opportunity and I was available to do it, let's do it. Exactly. And mind you, all it is is while I'm still working a full time fucking job, like I'm, I'm still working a full career. So yeah, like um. So another thing, you can be successful and you can make your way to the top and be part time. Don't let nobody tell you that you got to be full time. Kudos to those who are doing it full time because mm-hmm. low key, high key, I aspire because right. I don't always want to work a nine to five job. Exactly. So when I see <laughs> when I see other creators that are like, yo, I'm not working a job anymore and I'm doing this full time and they're getting the support from their community and they're getting support from their peers. I'm rooting the fuck. I'm rooting the fuck for you. I want you to win. I want you to thrive because just like you, I don't want to be working a nine to five job. I've been working a nine to five job for 22 years. I've been Ooh. working since I was 16 years old. Yeah. So if that wants to age myself, I'm two years till 40. You do the math. <laughs> so 
I don't, you know, like I want to do things that I enjoy and I love doing content. Yes. And I'm and I'm thankful for my support system and the people that I've I've met through content. Mm -hmm. And that leads to the next thing that I learned is like content has definitely built friendships and relationships for me that I would have never thought would have happened. Um, you know, because it's like, <laughs> you, like when you look at it, it's like, all right, I'm talking to people on the internet and this and the third. And that's, if you're looking at it in that one dimensional sense, then yeah, you're never, you're never going to really make those connections, but seeing people and seeing how much what's, what's related between you and other people mm -hmm. and just like being able to meet people in person yes. as well has definitely like kind of helped me as somebody who was seeking friendships in a new city in a new area and now in the sense of like i don't like there are places where i don't even like live in the same city with people but when we get to meet up at like conventions or mm -hmm. different meetups or whatnot i get to interact and i get to build more of a you know more of a deeper relationship you know but you know like a deeper either business relationship or like platonic friendships mm -hmm. like with so many different people that's one thing i'm like thankful for that is dope. You know what? Let's go ahead and slide into our next uh, section, words of advice. If you can give a piece of advice to either a someone who's starting off or somebody who's been doing content for a while, what is that one piece of advice that you would provide them? One piece of advice. I would probably say if it's one piece of advice that I always want to give, I would always say make the most fun out of what you do with your content. Mm -hmm. I feel like we've gotten into an age where everything is so business minded and I and I understand and I respect that but you got to have the passion you got to have the true genuine fun when it comes to content like you know do things that you truly enjoy mm -hmm. rep like really represent yourself and be uniquely you and when I say be uniquely you if there's something that you see from somebody, there's nothing wrong with taking that person's idea and making it yours. Now, also with that, give credit where credit is due. Exactly. I was you about know, to say. be inspired <laughs> by people, right? Mm -hmm. Be inspired by people and also give them their flowers because like, you know, you seen something that inspired you to do something like in that same sense. Right. I always tell anybody, like anybody that wanted to do sports side casting and they wanted to do it just like me, I'm like, go ahead and do it just like me, but also do it better than me. Right. Because you're because you're not me. Exactly. So I'm going to have my way to do it, but you find your way to do it and you do it, you do that damn mm -hmm. good. So, you know, I always tell somebody, like, people are like, oh, I want to be like you when I grow up, or I want to be just like you and be successful. I'm like, don't be like me, be better than me. Exactly. You know. Because it's like, I'm not in competition. I'm not in competition with you. I want you to thrive. The only competition I'm going to be in is always with myself because I'm pushing myself to be better. And I'm going to, and I, I push myself to be better than yesterday. And then I push myself to be better tomorrow than I am today. Exactly. So be, you know, be better than your past and then let your, let your future be better than your present. Always work on being better and you can be inspired by so many different things, but don't inspire to be that thing because you have the potential to do better. So I will say that to piggyback on, cause I, I hear this a lot, the be your genuine self and, and be excited about the work you're doing. I would say the back end of that, the reason why you want to do that is because content creation is fucking hard. There will be times where you want to create content. There'll be times where you know you should be working on something and you just can't bring yourself to do it. If you are faking it or if you are like emulating somebody else's style, you're going to feel that your body is going to genuinely feel like you. Hey, we are not being us right now and I don't want to do it because then it turns into work. Like once you right. start loving what you're doing, engaging in what you're doing, and like it's purely passion, you're not like I'm. I need to put this TikTok up because I gotta get my numbers up. You're like, no, I'm putting this up because it's fucking hilarious, and I want right. to share this. Like it's gonna make the journey that much easier for you. Right. I, I, it's it's weird because it's it's kind of like and it 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 sounds kind of hypocritical when I'm about to say this, mm -hmm. but um, it's it's kind of like the gym. Okay. Right. 
And when it, when I say it's kind of like the gym, it's like you really got to have like discipline when it comes to content creation. True. And um, I always I always think about Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson always says like discipline is doing something that you hate doing, but you do it like you love it. Ooh. And when you continue yeah. to do it, you know, even though you didn't like it at first, but when you keep building that habit, it starts to become that second nature, it becomes that lifestyle. And then it's something that you love to do. I love that. No, I agree, especially with the discipline thing. I years ago before the pandemic, I blame the pandemic for me stopping. I need to get back on it. But I used to run marathons like 5Ks, 10Ks, 15Ks, and I fucking hate running. But I told myself, I was like, I'm going to run a race one a month for at least a year. And then that practice, I think probably month two, I started to enjoy the practice like the running and like getting up early and going outside in the hot ass Florida sun, all that shit was garbage. But eventually my mind was like, this is what Mm -hmm. you need to do to get the end result, which is run the race, get the medal, blah, blah, blah. And like, it just turned into a routine. And that exercise taught me like so much about myself and just the overall psychology of us humans. Like if you are doing something that is going to be for the greater good of something that you want, that's going to be beneficial for your life. Like you got to get used to that, the shit that you, you hate, because if you hate it and you don't like it, that's when you start avoiding it and you start procrastinating. And trust me, procrastinating is a real, it's a real thing. I think we body that. That was perfect. I know there's some young streamer out there that's like, what? Just be consistent, even though we always say be consistent all the time. I was like one of the number one, hey, you want to be a streamer? Be consistent. That's anything in life. You want something, you got to be consistent with it. Well, Push, we have made it to our last section of the podcast. This is the call to action where I ask my guests to basically talk lovely about themselves. If you can direct the people to where you want them to view your content or anything of that nature, let them know. The floor is yours. What do you want the people to do, Push? First, I want to say thank you once again for having me on. It's, it's truly an honor. No problem. I guess now in this point of my life, I, I would say I feel like I'm a a free agent in the sense. Yeah. So um, I'm just making content. I'm making content and I'm making content that I enjoy. Mm-hmm. If you if you want to come to a channel where we talk about sports, we we do a lot of old school gaming. We do we do new school gaming. It's a whole bunch of variety. We even talk about life. Um, we talk about you know things that should that should have been discussed when we were in school, but not mm-hmm. like financial literacy. Facts. I'm always I'm always in the position of trying to teach people while also teaching myself. I don't have all the answers, but whatever answers that I do have, I like to share with the world. Mm-hmm. I don't believe in that gatekeeping nonsense shit. Yeah. So um, you can find me anywhere on um anywhere on social media. You can find me on twitch.tv slash pushplay the DJ instagram.com slash push play the dj tiktok at push play the dj youtube at push play the dj kind of get in the pattern right branson hell yeah keep that in your mind <laughs> you know you can find me um i do have a, i do have a kick account i'm you know testing out kick okay. uh i even test out trovo I mean, i'm testing out different sites because um you know, if if you can thrive on one platform, why can't you thrive on all? Like, you know, just do you know, if you just do it within the confines of the terms of service. Don't violate, don't violate stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yeah, YouTube, push play the DJ. I'm work I'm working on um putting more shorts content mm-hmm. and long form content. I just actually dropped a how to video on YouTube. I'm gonna be working on the second one and I'm dropping a lot of retro shorts on there. I'm working on get to 500 subscribers right now. Mm-hmm. I'm currently at 275. Let's go. So um, I am putting out content where content needs to be um, put out because as somebody who has seen social media grow and I have also seen a lot of social media platforms fall, I don't want to keep all my eggs in one basket, but because cer- certain certain sites are up and actually you know they're gone. Exactly. So um. You know, but yeah, you also find me on Twitter or X or um, the Bird app or Elon's <laughs> app, whatever y'all want to call it. At Push Play the DJ as well. Um, I don't know how long I'm gonna be on there because if he starts to charge people like he says he is, I'm out. then I'm yeah, out. I'm done. <laughs> um, you could also find me on 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 Threads, Push Play the DJ as well. Yeah. So that's where you can find me. So everything is all Push Play the DJ. I try to keep it as 
aligned with the brand security dope go follow my mans everywhere uh, i will have his links in the show notes if you know anybody who can gain any insight or knowledge from conversations like these and more share the podcast with them let them know that it exists upload it unfiltered i'm on your platform of choice everywhere go check me out leave me a review and if you know any other fellow content creators who want to be on the show uh hit me up looking to interview a lot of people i have a list of like all stars that i'm trying to hit i'm waiting until i get this show a little deeper before i start reaching out to them but for real if you want to be on a podcast and you just want to talk chop it up hit me up i'm always down for a dope ass conversation and with that push again thank you for being a guest with me this evening it's been exactly what i thought it would be and more so i appreciate the conversation and thank you for your insight that you provided this episode man i appreciate it uh like i said thank you for having me thank you for thank you for creating this podcast um i've listened to a couple episodes prior to and um i i love what you're doing i love how you're just you know tapping into so many different um concepts which is the people that you that you interview the the content the discussions that you have you you're, you're doing you got something special with this podcast man yo thank you man i appreciate it and again this is one of those life lessons like there were a few people in my life that were like yo there's enough podcasts out there and i was like but i my shit's not out there so there's not enough podcasts out there so so whatever you believe in just push towards it and do it and sometimes you just got to do it blindly and eventually it will pay off so take that what you will we are signing off as always protect your mental keep creating content and i will talk to y'all in the next one have a good rest of your day